and do a quick little show today. Want to want to invite William. Uh, he's been to a couple of our sessions. Really outstanding performer. Stays in the pocket. Always in a good mood. Always elevating the counterpart. William, what is your secret to negotiating? That's an excellent question. Um, the, the, the tricky part, to my mind, is it's almost an oxymoron that once you know what you want, you let go of it. You kind of put it in the back of your mind and focus on the other person because it's not about you. You know what you want. So you put it in the back of your head and it, it just kind of stays there. And then as soon as, you know, that's your line in the sand or, uh, you know, not sure what to call it exactly, but that's, that's your non-breakable. Other than that, you're just there to have a conversation and make it about the other person as much as possible. Oh, that's uh, that's spot on. That's something Douglas and I wholeheartedly uh, preach about. Yeah, when you want something, you're in negotiation. And paradoxically, you have to suspend that want. Or else, um, as some people call it, you come off with like commission breath. Yeah, that's exactly it. I mean... Uh, I was recently teaching a class and it was about choosing the perfect Christmas present. And uh, I also alluded to this is the way to get a, uh, a raise at work. This is the way to get anything from anyone, which is pay attention to the other person and stop making it about you. And it's really difficult to stop making it about you. Yeah. I mean, how do you tune into your counterparts radio station? Um, that's what a lot of people do out there is uh, they'll jump in and try to present right away, elevator pitch right away. Me, 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 me. Do you want me? Do you like me? The person's like, I don't, I don't know. What do you think, Douglas, on these two big points? I think it is a challenge. I think, uh, the paradigm shift that it takes uh, is not always easy. I, you know, again, and I'm the poster boy for this. I used to think I was a good listener until I started a negotiation practice. Um, so it, it really does take a, a discipline, I think is the right word. Um, and after a while, the good news is once you start practicing it, it becomes much more natural. Um, but I, my personal experience is a magnificent change in my 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 career because in networking groups it was like my results were my, like astonishing based on active listening. Uh, just go in and listen instead of you know first thing you know in a meetup the first thing you do hey 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 what do you, what have you got for me what, what what about me what about me and. And it's striking now when somebody comes in like that, it's like, oh, okay, well, good luck, sir. But I don't think that's going to work. And I'll say, I mean, over the time that I've known Doug, what it's been a year or so and his confidence, it's amazing how much his confidence, which again, it seems like an oxymoron. You're letting go of yourself, but your confidence is rising. That's right. But it's the honest truth. I mean, he, it's amazing the change in how you're, I mean, it was, when I first met you, it was almost combative. Mm. <laughs> I think that's fair. I really do. And now with the confidence up and, and what you're doing and paying attention to the other person, it's just, uh, wow. I mean, I totally get why you're succeeding the way you are. People mm. have got to love speaking with you. You know, and I, I know I always do. That's why we set up a weekly meeting because you're an amazing guy to talk to and connect with. Well, thank oh, you. And I, and I weekly really meeting? That. Yeah. Oh, uh, do go into this weekly meeting thing. Well, we just, we connect on a weekly basis to check in with each other and uh, share what's going on. It's just a safe place to, you know, share our insights and frustrations and, 
who we are, the things that are going on with us, a mutual admiration society, if you will. <laughs> Co coaching session, I like to say. I don't know, yes. William. Uh, I hate to be the bad guy here. Uh, Why? Help. What is it about it. you that hates to be the bad guy? That could be in some insightful stuff there. Well, whenever uh, you kept saying that, you kept shrugging your shoulders, removing that responsibility. I, I don't think you see uh, Douglas as, uh, as an equal. So just be honest. Uh, you're probably one of the most superior negotiators we've seen come in here. And your humbleness, I think it's the, you must, you must put that ego in like a really locked tight box on your, what, what do you do at the evening to let go of that ego? See, and I go the other way just to digress for a moment. And that's yeah. uh, ask Doug. I mean, I'm, I'm not perfect. I screw up and I value his input more than I can say. So uh, is that true? Has William ever screwed up? Uh, yeah, not, not, it's, it, it's, it's the challenge of running a business. I mean, it's not. I don't care how good you are at anything. It's 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 hard out here for a pimp. Can we can we say that? Can we say that on my podcast? Um, it's just uh, you know marketing and and growing a business is a is a is a war. I and mean, so you know it. There are missteps. So from a negotiation standpoint, it's not really that's not really where the where the coaching comes in anyway. I think it's more the. Uh, Talking about how we're growing our businesses more than anything. Oh, okay. And it's fascinating. Uh, what what kind of business, uh, William, are you venturing into? If you don't, if you don't mind uh, us knowing in our thirty viewers. <laughs> well, I'm a concierge life coach, and I've been doing it for about uh, thirty five years. It's just been in the last year or so that I've been actively looking to grow my business. Before it was almost a side thing. It wasn't, uh, you know, my career. And uh, while I've done things like been a corporate executive and uh, oh. done sales, I owned a resort and marina. I mean, it was only a couple mil, but still I, I made it to that height. But I also lived on the street. Because that wasn't fulfilling me. And the only thing I found over the years that has been truly fulfilling is helping other people as a life coach. So I work with highly successful people. But I've got to disagree with Doug slightly that to me, that is part of negotiation is understanding that it takes work. It takes effort. We're not going to be perfect at everything that we tackle especially the first couple times. And when we own that and let go of it, it enables us to, again, let go, to go back to that oxymoron, to let go, to know this is, this is our non-negotiable. This is it. I know where that is. So now I'm taking it away or taking away the visual side of it just to focus on who is in front of me. You know, I think you're the first guest to go, to have hit the nail right on the head. Uh, the purpose of the show is called the non-negotiable. I mean, the purpose being is that there should be things in life that's non-negotiable to your brain and your body. Things that you don't want to do and you must do. There's non-negotiables in people's life whether they want to admit it or not. And also, uh, it seems like for you, the non-negotiable is finding a path with a heart. Say that again, please. I, I missed it. For you, the non-negotiable is finding a path with a heart. Very well said. Very well said. I mean, I understand when Chris says, you know, that the win-win is a bad thing. But to me, if the win is that the other person has a heart, you know, and they don't feel raked over the coals for whatever the negotiation is, that is a win-win. I'm still not changing my non-negotiable. That is what it is. But I'm not trying to make the other person a loser in the negotiation. That is not. Uh, uh, how can you lift them up? How can you 
uh, you know, make it as close to a win-win without giving up your non-negotiable, but as close to a win-win as possible. And are you married? No. With kids, no. No. That, Looking that to adopt. I'm sorry. Getting married was non-negotiable, or not getting married. Uh, I'm not sure how to play that in. I mean, I'd love to get married if the right person or the the dumb person, somebody silly enough to want to marry me, comes ah. along. Uh, you know, I'd love to get married. You know, you handled it with grace. Um, we've discussed. The most awkward question uh, Chris Voss was asked in an interview, it was with Jordan Peterson. Jordan Peterson asked him, well, if you got all this negotiation stuff, how come you're divorced? (laughs) (laughs) I love it. I love it. (laughs) And he he handled it gracefully. He said, well, you know, some things happen and I'm out there looking for the next Mrs. Voss. So if there's any... uh, (laughs) Well said. Very well said. There. Exactly. <laughs> Some things happen. But Douglas, do you have any uh any awkward questions? You're just kidding. Any questions for William? Um, William, I'm fascinated. How does your life coaching uh inform your your negotiation skill? How does that understanding of human psychology? How did that accelerate your your negotiation? Oh boy, that's an interesting question. The it's a very mixed bag, and by that I don't mean uh, I, I would almost flip it, and that's the negotiation truly informed a lot of the psychology. So back in the mid '80s, I started studying neurolinguistic programming. I mean, it was only discovered in the '70s, so it, it was still a really new thing. And it was just barely getting out there. And that's the same time that uh, uh, Tony Robbins had started studying it and taking off with it. The tools that are given to you, the, the how and what, the seems like, the labeling, the elephant in the room, I mean, those are not new concepts by any stretch of the imagination. The fact that he, yeah. he being Chris, identified those tools is huge and i've i've spoken to one of his trainers that if anything though it still feels like he's they're so focused on the tools that they're missing the big picture and by that i mean the black swan group Mm -hmm. and i presented that to them just as a, a possibility for even bigger growth i mean i am i may not be their number one fan but i'm sure up there i love those guys but nothing is perfect. Nothing, you know, how does Chris say it? Don't, don't be so, so uh, set on one thing that you wouldn't take something better. So could the black swan be even bigger and better? And the answer to me is yes. If they would focus on the dream more, focus on the bigger outcomes that negotiation gives you. Instead of just providing tools. So we, you mentioned relationship and marriage. And would it be amazing to get along with your partner and have your kids listen a lot easier without any arguments? Well, here are the tools to accomplish that, i.e. labeling and elephants and letting go of yourself and how and what questions and asking for a no and all of those things can be applied to a relationship but they don't they being the black swan group don't talk about that they don't hit the bigger picture they say here are these tools and you can apply them to all these different things well that's terrific the challenge is we uh, we as humans love leaders. We love people that say, how can I use this tool? Where can I use this tool? Now I want to learn the tool. If uh, to use another example, I'm very against the public education system. One and one is two is all well and good. But if I can teach a young person that 
wants to be a carpenter, that they need to be able to figure out how to get the right angle, they're going to understand geometry so much better than forcing them to learn geometry without an application at the end. Now, people that come to the Black Swan group are brilliant because they know there's some way to apply it, but the Black Swan could, could grow even bigger if they started with a bigger vision, a dream, to share with the people and show how that could be applied, all of those tools could be applied to the dream that they have. You know, uh, one of the most recent things Chris Voss has said is that he's throwing all his no notebooks away. <laughs> when he gets into a conversation, he does just that. Um, just listen empathetically, wholeheartedly to the counterpart. However, though, uh, it's just like my professor in grad school. I didn't finish grad school. But I like what he said that. Uh, you have to learn first the geometry, then you can break the rules. Uh, so it is, it is important to learn the basics, practice it, and then make it your own. Uh, then, yeah, get rid of the crutches, get rid of the training wheels. And you might not even be using that many labels in a conversation anymore. Not as many no oriented questions. Uh, amongst their group, they do use these tools, they said, only when the counterpart is being non-cooperative, even though they work together. You know, they'll be like, hey, man, why are you bossing me or using the tools on me? <laughs> well, frankly, um, you're not doing what I want you to do. So, you know, I got to start deploying something, rattle you a bit. I, I don't disagree with what you're saying. The ch so taking it into pieces, if I know why I want to use, and this is a Simon Sh 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 Simon something or other, he's a cynic. Big cynic, thank you. Yep. He always talks about the why. And I think an even bigger paradigm is the dream. But if I know why I want to learn geometry, I agree, you can't get rid of, you, you need to learn it. But if I know why I want to learn it, I'm going to retain it a whole bunch more. So that's an important aspect. And that's where I'm saying, even on a bigger stand, if I have a dream, if I have a vision that I can communicate to the people that I'm talking to, that I can enroll them, bring them into the vision, then when I start talking about the boring stuff, the 90 degree angle, the tools, the things that go into it, people are much more likely to retain that information because they have a dog in the fight, if you will. They are paying attention to what's going on because they know the application they want to use it. But if I say, well, you have to use geometry because you're going to use it sometime in your life. Okay, uh, sorry, you know, people just aren't sure. It had something to do with shapes, I, you know. And that's with negotiation, it's the same thing that if we start with a vision, if we start with this dream, this, this, the why, why are we having this negotiation? Husband and wife, why, well, I want peace between. I want our relationship to grow even stronger. Well, this is a tool we can use to accomplish that. Wow, okay. But if it's the other way, both people are familiar with the Voss stuff, that's exactly what you, I, I agree with you. Why are you trying to Voss me? Well, I'm trying to have, I, I want our relationship to be even bigger I want it to be stronger. I want love with us all the time. Now, that's also a label that is addressing the elephant in the room. But that's getting to the core issue. The core issue is the dream, is the vision. So why am I trying to boss you? 
well, what would you like out of this conversation? What's really going on? It seems like you don't want harmony and growth and love. Oh, no, that's what I want. Well, how else can we get there? What do you suggest? I just want to let everybody know that was a calibrated question, calibrated question, <laughs> um, label, <laughs> calibrated question. God, man, you really bossed it up. Yeah, well, it's, it's no, what we were talking about earlier. It's getting to that core. Questions. Yeah, you get to the core. Um, it, it is like a, a lightsaber. It'll, it'll cut right through things and get to the core. Oh, and that's, uh, Douglas, has that been something you've been doing? Uh, yeah, I, I think the, harder? the uh, calibrated questions, especially if done right with the right tone, can really change your understanding completely of what you're in uh, NLP, we talk about the uh, map and the territory, and a lot of the problems that you encounter, or just your map of, of what reality is, and their uh, their map is, are just not the same. And so, trying to get on the same map, so to speak, uh, the calibrated questions are fantastic for getting on the same page. Um, and so, that's one of the. But but also, though, I think to get good answers, you have to be in rapport. Um, so if you're not in rapport, I don't think calibrated questions are as good. Uh, also, um, and, and William, I'd be fascinated what your your take is on that. I agree. I mean, one of the the basic basic things from NLP is matching states and then changing that state. And Chris is a god when it comes to the late night FN DJ voice, which is kinesthetic. That's connecting to them on a kinesthetic level, but you can't start there. If the other person's going like this and they're angry and what's going on and you start with them, oh my gosh, it's horrible. And as you're talking to them, you slowly start bringing it down. And I, I'm so sorry that you're going through all of this stuff. And my gosh, this is so frustrating. And you're matching state and you're slowly bringing it down. Then to, the heart to heart happens at the kinesthetic level. The heart to heart is the, the late night FM DJ voice. You can't have a conversation up there. Nobody's going to get anything. And that's establishing rapport. It's also leading. Again, being the leader is an important thing. Letting them be in charge, but you're still the leader. Speaking of leaders, uh, William, uh, you mentioned one of your clients is Beyonce. <laughs> you talk to us about Beyonce for five minutes. Well, no, what I said was <laughs> Beyonce was an example. Oh. What I work with are highly successful people that are like Beyonce. And uh, unfortunately, to the audience, I sign non disclosure agreements. I am not allowed to talk about specifically who I work with. That's. Uh, they appreciate their confidentiality, as do I. Would, would you say it's safe to say that there are entertainers in your role of Dex of clients in the past and the present? I, I work with a wide variety of people, but let's just leave it at they're all very successful. Are there any entertainers? In I, I, I'm going to stick with my. There are some highly successful people. I've been directed on advice of counsel not to answer that. <laughs> <laughs> well said, Doug. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> Is there a celebrity you wouldn't take on as a client? A certain genre or a certain type of celebrity? The the big thing is, and and this is where I'm. Oh even more impressed with, with Chris is he's dealing with people that he probably doesn't like. In fact, uh, you know, is probably disgusted by them in a lot of cases. Mm. Luckily in my case, I'm, you know, as a life coach, I work with people that were on the same level. You know, we have some, some fundamental agreements to life and uh, you know, what we're looking for and things like that. So are there people out there that are successful that I wouldn't touch with a hundred foot pole? Absolutely. And I'm sure they wouldn't want to talk to me either because we we're not in agreement on, you know, some basic fundamental life stuff. And I think that's what 
differentiates this system with many is um, you are essentially identifying someone that's hard, annoying, lame, and frustrating, and someone that's easy, fun, and lucrative. Yeah, you know, you want to avoid those hard, annoying people because they'll uh, they'll suck you dry. They'll run you to the ground. Just a couple of them. And a lot of folks out there, I know, especially in sales, it's a numbers game. Hey, if uh, they raise their hand, they got a pulse. Take them on. The thing is, though, and this is, again, where I think Chris is truly the master, is on some level you are establishing rapport you you are tapping into what that other person is and what they're up to even when they're a psychopath even when they're sick in the head but that's a level of self-knowledge and having that non-negotiable this is who i am who i am is not a dog in this fight if that makes sense so that i can label and Talk to this person with complete complete respect. And I, I'm suggesting I'm not that good at that. If I'm not on the same page, but truly I do look for the good or something that I can connect with with that person. Even if I don't agree with it, I'm still looking for that. If, uh, does that follow? Yeah. It's got to be a, uh, it's got to be symbiotic. Okay, yeah. Even if, even if again you don't agree with them at all. Yeah, you know, uh, before we head out, yeah, that's I think one of the coolest things is that if you do have to connect with someone that's in a whole different mindset than you are, um, negotiators, yeah, they they got to negotiate with that guy with that grandpa holding. His granddaughter hostage. Yeah, they don't like that he's doing that for sure. However, they're going there to connect. How come you're holding your granddaughter hostage? Uh, her her dad's a druggie, abuses her, and I'm dying, so I'm going to take her with me. No one can protect her, so I don't want to. I don't want the world to harm her. So now they connected. Like, wow, you know, you're very protective. You care about her. You're dying. And would it be crazy if you release her to us? And I, that still blows my mind that, yeah, you don't have to um, be fake or even try to bring the person to your house for dinner. You can still get the thing done. And you leave the situation, um, you know, last impression is a lasting impression. It's Amen. Yes. It's, um, well, we reached our 30 minute mark. Uh, can you give us, if you have one on you, one of those uh, elevator pitches? How can people find you, connect with you if they liked what they've heard and seen? LinkedIn is the best way to reach out to me. And uh, the elevator pitch is uh, I'm a concierge life coach. I work with highly successful people that want to find within themselves that the answers they're looking for. Douglas, you got anything anything uh, to add? Well, no, I just uh, wanted to uh, thank William for coming on and uh, really getting a chance to dive deep into the the genius behind his his negotiation techniques. And, and thank you for coming on. Thank you. It's always a pleasure. Yeah, hey, I would like to get on those. Uh, what do you guys do once a week? Uh, I like to join in once a month, once a quarter. <laughs> Well, we'll get uh, Doug if we ever get the uh, schedule straight. We'll have to invite Daniel. In. <laughs> absolutely, yeah, absolutely. We'll we'll get it done. Thank you so much, gentlemen. Have a wonderful weekend. You as right. well, and Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, guys. That's right. Merry Christmas. <laughs>